Coming up, an act of generosity leads to a financial breakthrough for a young couple, and God helps a young man walk away from a life of crime. Well, welcome to 700 Club Canada. Bill, it's day three of our Partnered for Purpose Week, and what a great week we're having. Absolutely. And maybe you're watching and you're thinking, what does partnership do? If I were to become a partner with you, what would, that ha what would happen? Well, here's what would happen. You'd get the good news into homes and hearts, partners with ministries to reach the vulnerable. It gives you the opportunity to be a part of what God is doing in Canada. And in my opinion... That's worth it. That is <laughs> worth it. The good news, and both in word, like you see on the TV show, and indeed, because we partner with ministries that are on That's the front right. lines. And a ministry that you help support is Prison Fellowship Canada. Its aim is to be a national community of reconciliation and restoration to prisoners, ex-prisoners, their families, and victims. And joining us today is Stacey Campbell, President and CEO, to tell us more. Welcome back to 700 Club Canada, Stacey. Hi, Lori. Thank you. It's great to be here. Well, Seven Club, 700 Club Canada has been a ministry partner with Prison Fellowship Canada for many years. Uh, for those watching, they might not be familiar with your ministry. Can you tell us a, a little bit about what it, what it does? For sure. So, uh, Prison Fellowship Canada operates right across the uh, right across the country in in uh, every province and and territory, and and we uh, we connect with just over 150 prisons and jails, and which is which is nearly all of them in the country, and and that is um, that tends to be our beginning point where we offer Bible studies and life skill programs and that type of thing to those who are incarcerated, uh, both men, women, and youth. And um, and then from there, we just take a holistic look at what are what are all the needs that are created um, and how does the local church respond and how and prison fellowships mission is to equip and mobilize the local church to respond to the issues of crime. And uh, that involves being, uh, you know, working with victims, working with the families of the incarcerated and incarcerated people as well. Well, I just love the work that you do, Stacey, um, especially the way you not only start, as you say, in the prisons, but now you're, you're inviting churches to partner with you as you minister to the families. And it's such a significant part of this journey of restoration and healing, right? Um, can you just explain then how the financial giving of 700 Club Canada Partners enables you to make an impact with those that you serve? For sure. And 700 Club Canada has been an excellent partner. And, and particularly, we have focused over the years, Lori, on the Indigenous community. And it, it is a, a population, unfortunately, that grows and grows. Um, in the in the prison, we see, we see prisons um, and jails that have as high as 90% uh, that that are indigenous. Overall, it's um, overall through the whole incarceration system. It uh, accounts for thirty to forty uh, percent of the population, and so we partner with the Seven Hundred Club. Canada around the children um, uh, uh, with Indigenous parents who have a who have a parent that's incarcerated, and that involves making that connection at Christmas, which is a which is just about to come up, and um, where a gift is purchased and then delivered to that child on behalf of the adult parent, who who sign who uh, writes a little card and a note to their uh, to their child, and that connection really is a major identity piece, and. Um, and just just allows the just allows the 700 club canada and prison fellowship together to share the love of god and say that we care we care about this community we care what's going on in this family um, and we want that child engaged and um, doing as well as they possibly can and then of course in the summer uh, you help us with our camping and that's an opportunity for kids to go uh, to a christian camp for a week get out of the city we have kids that have never been um you know off a reserve or out of the city or or that type of thing and and go to uh to camp and and learn sports and skills and friendship and just all kinds of great life-giving things well that is so beautiful and i love love the our partnership with you and i just the connection uh, that we're creating for families, the access that you're giving to children to have minister to themselves. One thing I've learned, and you know this, Stacey, is when you minister to the children, you can reach the parents. Isn't that true? That's right. 
That is that, and and that's our goal. And as we think to the future and what's next in uh, the program and and prison fellowship, that's something we have been uh, developing over the last number of months. And how do we get year round? Um, access and opportunity and not just not for the sake of having access, but for the sake of loving those children and loving those families and letting them know that they're they're not alone. And uh, we all know to be a single to be a single parent is a is a monumental task and pressure on every front, socially, emotionally, financially, spiritually, on all fronts. And uh, to add the layer of of um, incarceration to that is, you know, it's yeah. just a minefield. And yeah. so to be able to have a ministry where we can uh, where we can have access to those caregivers uh, year round and the kids and getting them into youth groups year round and that type of thing and just really earnestly journeying with the family. I love that. And so this is, you said, a new goal uh, that you have for the future. And this is a way that 700 Club Canada can partner with you in making that happen. That's right. Yeah, ab- absolutely. And and we work on the basis that we we take um, we take the applications, and then as um, you know, as partnership funding comes in, then that allows us to know how many how many can we actually uh, can we actually serve. And so our goal this year in the uh, in the Christmas season is four thousand children. Wow. And so, uh, and we've and we've often been between uh, between that three thousand thirty seven hundred uh, number is where we've been in the in recent years. But uh, yeah, we're looking to accept four thousand children this year. Well, I think we got to pray right now for those yeah. four thousand kids. Is there anything else we can pray for for your ministry? Yeah. Pray for us for access. We are dependent on being able to get into um, into the prison, and there's a lot of things that can go on in terms of um, illness, uh, security, safety. A lot of things can block our access to uh, to the prisons. But that's where we find the that's where we find the parent, and that's where we start the process. So, so if you could pray for that, and and then just engagement. You know, sometimes there can just be a general malaise about you know, stuff going on. And and when you're living a bored day after day life, um, you know, it's hard to get excited. So just pray for a sense of excitement and engagement um, in the institution around the program and a willingness to participate so we can reach those children for Jesus. Beautiful. Well, we pray right now in Jesus name, go get those 4,000 children, Lord, create uh, access and engagement so this ministry can flourish in Canada in Jesus' name. Thank you so much, Stacy, for your leadership. God bless you as you continue to serve. Thank you, Lori. Well, for more about Stacy and Prison Fellowship Canada, go to 700club.ca. And after the break, Ray walks away from a life of crime after an encounter with God. What do I enjoy most about what I do? Well, that's easy. I love connecting with people. Especially when someone says, I am so glad I can talk with you. I really need prayer. That's God's perfect timing. I talk with people all the time who want prayer for a family situation. Sometimes it's prayer for an emotional or physical need or even a financial breakthrough. It's so amazing that I can share about God's love and encourage people. I love this Bible verse. For it is God who works in you to will and to act in order to fulfill his good purpose. God is at work. I've seen him answer prayer. Won't you call today? 1-855-759-0700. God bless you. I was taught that there's this balancing act of, uh, of good that had to outweigh your bad deeds. I constantly felt this tension of um, not measuring up. Raymond grew up in a Muslim home. He believed in God, but constantly struggled with the teachings of the Muslim faith. I wanted to know the reason why we were here. What purpose did my life had? Because I didn't get an answer to those questions, by the age of 10, I decided that I wasn't gonna follow Islam anymore. Unsure of where he belonged, Raymond looked for approval from his peers, but he found trouble instead. When I started pursuing crime, one of the first places that I found acceptance was in 
shoplifting. Uh, I would shoplift specifically candies and chocolate bars and stuff like that from my schoolmates, and that kind of surrounded me with, uh, you know, with a lot of friends. I felt more than just acceptance, like appreciated. By the time Raymond reached his teens, his sights were set on much bigger targets. When I was 16, I had, uh, I had started breaking into underground parking lots. Start a car with a screwdriver, and we got a car started, and we stole it, and, and I had gotten caught for that. That's when I landed my first provincial charge. By this time, I was just stealing for the sake of stealing. Life in the fast lane began to catch up with Raymond, as his addiction to crime also became an addiction to alcohol which played a part in him being expelled from high school. I was just drinking. I was just spending away my days holding employment just long enough to be able to buy more alcohol. And it was during a night out drinking with friends where Raymond went over the edge. I was out at a bar, and an altercation happened that ended up with me stabbing a gentleman there nine times in the chest. Nothing was quite as significant as a wake-up call as the thought of possibly taking someone's life. But at the same time, I didn't know how to change. I had been so accustomed to this years, more than 13 years had gone by. Miraculously, the man survived, and Raymond spent only a short amount of time behind bars. Life slowed down just enough to give Raymond some much-needed perspective. When I got charged for uh, aggravated assault, two Christian cousins invited me out to a Bible study at their church. And I remember that was just groundbreaking for me because it was the first time I had a perspective about life that made sense. Uh, I still, because of the things I was taught in Islam, didn't want to accept a, a man as God and didn't want to offer him worship in that way. Another thing Raymond wasn't ready to accept was that he had a problem. After he was released from prison, Raymond returned to a life of crime and addiction. I was out here in what I thought, where I thought I would be free, and I wasn't any more free out here than I was when I was in there, and that really led to despair in life. Uh, it's what happened next that really began to transform my life. <laughs> the simplest way to put it is the Holy Spirit followed me home. I was sitting at an intersection. I had no license, a drinking and driving charge. I had. Uh, I think a fake insurance slip in, in my glove box. I had alcohol in the car, I had marijuana in the car, so I wasn't even supposed to be operating a vehicle. And a cop pulls up behind me. And all of a sudden, that's when I heard the voice say to me, they can come as close as they want to you, but unless I give the word, they cannot touch you. I can't imagine if this is God speaking, why he'd be protecting me. Uh, the cop turned right in the middle of the intersection and began going in the adjacent way. I drove two, two lights down the street and just saying, that couldn't be God. And all of a sudden, right in the midst of that doubt, another cop pulled out of a different parking lot and came behind me. And I heard the voice again. He said, they can come as close as they want to you, but unless I give the word, they cannot touch you. And I pulled out from that intersection, trusting, hoping that he would protect me. The sirens went off and I slumped back in my seat. I remember I was so angry and I was like, this is just like you, God. And as I'm in the middle of that thought, the cop pulls, drives around me and takes off. And now I feel totally ashamed because that's twice now this, in this evening that I doubted that he would protect me and yet both times he did. I had believed in God to be a certain way, but now he was revealing himself in a different way than, than, than what I thought. And it just terrified me. I was cut to the core. I fell to my face, just bawling my eyes out. I, I realized that he was in control of the police that night. And I knew it was the God of the Bible speaking to me and that I had to get my hands on a Bible and, and, you know, learn what else did he say? What else is he saying? Raymond immediately started going to church and poured himself into community. I was going for everything. I was there on Sunday service. They had an evening service. I went for that. They had a youth on Friday. I went for that. They had young adults. I went for that. But I was just so hungry for the Word of God, and God was speaking so, so clearly to me. Today, Raymond has a passion for reaching prisoners with the gospel as Prison Fellowship Canada's National Office Manager. He is also the author of two books, Broken Heart of Joy and Servants of Light. A young boy who once struggled with purpose is now a man devoted to helping others find theirs. I think when we ask the question of uh, what's my purpose or what looking for meaning in life, God is so faithful. He 
does intend to answer it for each and every individual out there. In order to be able to comprehend his answer to us, take time. And so it's not that God doesn't hear your prayers or that God has somehow overlooked you. It's just that God will answer in his time. You know, I just love what Prison Fellowship Canada is doing to make a massive difference in Canada. And one of the benefits of partnering with us is that we partner with ministries like this. And one of the initiatives that I really love is their Angel Christmas Tree. I think that's what yeah. it's called, right? The, the, to serve kids who have parents incarcerated. Yeah. Have any of you seen the benefit of that or been a part of that ministry in yeah. some way? We've seen the impact of uh, the gifts coming through for the kids to be able to enjoy um, something special at Christmas time. Yeah, yeah well, I, I would imagine they feel abandoned or forgotten, and then someone yeah. just reminds them that, hey, there's somebody who sees you. Yeah. And actually, I want to ask you to contribute your partnership with the 700 Club Canada and prayerfully consider a gift to support this valuable ministry. You know, while we're grateful for any gift that is received, we'd love for you to join our growing list of monthly donors. And you can do that today, right now, by calling 1-855-759-0700. So let's make a difference. Whether it's making a donation of any amount or give, uh, starting by doing a monthly donation or increasing your monthly That's donation. That's right. Uh, thank you to those of you who are already partnering. Uh, they're already monthly supporters. And if you would prayerfully consider increasing your donation, that would be a huge difference. Absolutely. Yeah, and so we invite you to call us. And just a reminder that we have some wonderful uh, thank you gifts this week, the 10 Laws of Success that comes with a workbook. Uh, you'll receive our Frontlines newsletter each month and a bonus uh, gift this month, the Lord is my shepherd for giving this week. Uh, you know, I was talking to Stacy earlier. She was saying their goal is 4,000 children. That's right. 4,000 children. So I just wonder if we could just pause and, you know, pray for these kids and these families. Would you be willing to do that, Joanne? Or Edith, who has the, you have the microphone on. <laughs> yes, yes Father God in heaven, we thank you for these children and we ask so oh God in heaven that you would draw their hearts unto you in Jesus name. Mm -hmm. We pray oh God that they will be able to reach the parent as well and there will be salvation, there will be healing and there will be miracles in Jesus name. Amen. 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 And so we can do this. I believe it's possible I think so. to reach this target but it only happens if we do it together and that's why partnership is so important. Let's do something together that will make a lasting difference in eternity. Well, after the break, see how Brian and Kara work through their money differences to achieve financial freedom. Your will and the next generation. Creating a will can teach the next generation what it means to return to others what has been given to you. A well-crafted will can leave a lasting and meaningful legacy for generations to come. You can give your loved ones more than just money. You can provide them with the opportunity to learn valuable lessons like generosity, family responsibility, good stewardship, and wise tax planning. Advisors with Purpose can take you step by step through the will planning process in order to fulfill your dreams, your wishes, and your legacy. 700 Club Canada has partnered with Advisors with Purpose to offer you this free service. Contact us to get started at plan at advisorswithpurpose.ca. Brian and Kara started dating in college. They soon realized they'd come from families with very different views when it came to managing money. Growing up, it was sort of um, just like a little bit of chaos. The lights would get shut off because the bill didn't get paid in time. Brian's family was financially stable and taught him the biblical principle of tithing. Tithing was kind of instilled to me from super early. You know, I remember getting a dime, you know, for I don't remember what I did, obviously some type of chores and, you know, me giving my penny. Kara had never heard of tithing until she saw Brian writing a tithe check to his church. It was like $500 or something and I was like you're giving all that money to the church and he was like yeah I'm tithing and I was like really but you could spend that money somewhere else God's commitments are up here and you know the things down here is kind of like what's left over is what I'm able to do and I have to work with this amount because this is what I promised to God type of thing 
It became obvious to Kara that God had blessed Brian's commitments and his finances. He just taught me so much, um, you know, in terms of like being financially responsible or being patient and wise with your finances. They married and started a family. Brian and Kara made tithing a priority. Unfortunately, they also had accumulated school and auto loans and credit card debt that totaled over $60,000. So Brian picked up extra jobs as a programmer, continued to tithe on their income, and made a strict spending budget. At first, it was difficult for Kara. Brian definitely helped me. You know, I just started to kind of see the fruits of like patience and wisdom and um, not having debt. Their financial discipline paid off. Before long, they were debt free. Then they received an inheritance from Brian's grandparents. The first thing they did was tithe. That's still the biggest check I've written for tithe. That was pretty crazy, writing that check. Being able to give money to God's kingdom, to feel like you're actually you know, forwarding you know, and bringing our people to Christ is uh, also obviously very rewarding. Soon after, they were able to buy a new home with cash. And that was from a lot of extra work, you know, above and beyond, you know, because obviously during this time, we're still continuing to tithe. It's surreal. I mean, that's the only word I can use to describe, you know, driving up to our house now and being like, wow, we don't owe any money on this. Like, so crazy how quick, and it was just like, wow, we just bought a house. <laughs> All the way back, it's like, God's just been so faithful to us. Brian believes the key to financial success is keeping biblical priorities. God is first. God is my dad, my provider. I stay true to my commitments to him. You know, we try to be, again, good stewards of what we've been given. Brian says there's a word for how he feels today. I guess if you want to say it in one word, is freedom. You know, that ability to do those things and not have to be worried. We can bless who we want to bless, and it's just amazing. If you tithe and if you have a spirit to give, and bless others, you don't go into that saying, what's God gonna bless me with now? Like, it just comes, like it's like overflowing. And so this whole week is entitled Partnered for Purpose. And that's what we're actually asking you to lean into. Would you lean into generosity in order to fulfill a great purpose that we believe God has for all of us to reach this amazing nation of Canada with the truth of who he is and what he can do when we surrender to him. But I, I found this really interesting statistic. Um, they say that generosity reduces stress and increases happiness. That's a good thing. It also builds community and enhances relationship. It also meets real needs and bolsters purpose, hence partnering for purpose. I love what 2 Corinthians 9 verse 6 says. It says, remember this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each of you should give what you've decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to bless you abundantly so that in all things, at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. And so I want you to see giving as more than an obligation today. I want you to see it as an opportunity to invest in what really matters. What matters to God is people. And so today, if you partner with us, um, you'll receive these great resources. The one is called The Ten Laws for Success. It also has a workbook, plus this DVD, The Lord is My Shepherd. And as a bonus, our Frontline's monthly article uh, magazine with articles that will encourage, inspire, and equip you. So partner with us today. There's a number there that you can call. Call it right now. Partner, receive these resources, but more importantly, make a difference in the lives of people in this great country we call Canada. We'll be right back. How is this world supposed to work? Is there a godly framework for success? How can I live with eternity in mind? Get answers to these questions and more in Practicing the 10 Laws for Success from CBN. Featuring Pat Robertson's signature book, 10 Laws for Success, in hardcover and audio formats, plus a brand new study guide. Practicing the 10 Laws for Success will give you the tools you need to live with godly purpose and power. Learn how to practice life-changing principles such as the laws of use, unity, change, and responsibility. 
Discover biblical principles for achieving success both now and for eternity. Put the laws of God's kingdom to work in your life. Get practicing the 10 laws for success today when you become a CBN partner. Call or go online now. What a great reminder on today's show of what generosity does in our lives, not just in the lives of those that we give to, but it grows your capacity to give more. You've said that a few times this week, Bill. Well, yeah, and I love our theme, Partnered for Purpose, because when you partner, it, it's not just giving money. We, we right. gotta change our mindset around that. Yeah. And it's not even just support, it's actually partnership because together we get to share in the benefit. And one of the amazing benefits is lives are changed all the time. And so when you partner, you're a part of the kingdom of God and lives being changed. And as you said, partnering isn't just about money. In fact, it's about prayer. That's right. Right? Very significant part as we got our 700 Club Canada team here, uh, both staff and prayer team, uh, we're gonna pray. Yes. So Edith, why don't you uh, lead us, start us out here? So I have a prayer request from Kamel. I pray for family salvation, healing for Zoe, and uh, also for Mark. Father God in heaven, we thank you, and we bring um, Kamel's family before you. We ask that you will send laborers across their path, that their eyes, O oh God, will be open, mm -hmm. and they will receive the finished work of Jesus Christ in Jesus' name. We pray, O oh God, in heaven, that you will draw them to yourself and bring them in, in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 And Pauline? Uh, Rochelle, uh, writing in to uh, pray for her grandchildren's addictions. Mm -hmm. Father, we come before you, and we just, uh, you know these children by name. Father, we just thank you that um, you would take away any desire, oh God, for uh, whatever the addiction is. And we just pray that they will be restored. Yes. And uh, we thank you for what you're about to do in these lives. Mm -hmm. In the name of Jesus, and we'll be sure to give you the glory in Jesus' mm -hmm. name. Amen. Amen. And I would just like to add to that, Jesus, that for those who are feeling maybe stress or anxiety around their finances today, that they, again, would just be reminded, you are our provider. Yes and you want to partner with us to do great things. So remind us, you are our source in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. And certainly at this ministry, you've seen God provide over and over oh, again. Exactly. And I appreciate when you look back over the history of even CBN and you know, this year we, we lost Pat Robertson, but his life of just really, he laid down his life he did. to reach people for the with He was the truly good news. generous with time, talent, and yes. treasure, and the fruit lasts even to this day. That's right. Well, our power verse today is found in Psalm 112, verse 5, where it says, Good will come to those who are generous and lend freely who conduct their affairs with justice. So may you learn to be generous and experience partnering with God. Actually, that's what I love about God. He's relational. He wants to work with all of us for his kingdom to come on this earth. Thanks for all you do. To contact us, visit 700club.ca. Tomorrow on the 700 Club Canada, we'll hear from a partner ministry that is helping women break free from addiction and a couple starts their marriage with over $100,000 in debt.